Alrighty folks, so we have our next run ready to go, which is Lotus Esprit Turbo Challenge, the medium category, by our very own Tiny Tim 78 So Tim, feel free to take it away, the floor is yours. Hello there folks, my name is TinyTim78 and I'm going to be running Lotus Esprit Turbo Challenge for you today. This is the medium game category. I have with me my wonderful friend commentator, Digital Duck. Hello. Who is going to be helping uh, describe this game for you. A little bit different from some of the games you may have seen in the event so far. This is more of an arcade style sort of racing game. So hopefully you will uh, enjoy this one. So we're going to get started very shortly. We'll get started in just a moment. Okay, just... Right, okay, so th this game is a racing game from 1990, originally on the Commodore Amiga. And it is a very, very arcade-style racing game. It's, yeah, realistic it ain't, but it's a very, very good fun game. Uh, well, thank you very much. I'm seeing the comments in chat there. You've seen me do the easy category before, but you're hyped for this run. Well, I'm hyped for it too. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. This is the medium category. It is going to be a little more challenging. Uh, let me explain. Could, would you actually explain to me? Explain to me. <laughs> would you like to explain, Duck, the difference between the categories here? Yeah, so there are, you have an easy, medium, and hard category. Uh, they each have completely different races in, so that there are in fact 32 races in total, and they're split between the three categories. Um, the, gen generally speaking, obviously the easy category has easier levels, but they're they're not exclusive. Some of some of the levels towards the end of easy are harder than the levels at the start of the other difficulties. You know, you know how it works. The, the the hardest category is harder tracks in general. Yeah. And there's, there's certainly a lot more of them. Yeah, they're definitely separate. Uh, and again, you get seven in easy, ten in medium, and fifteen in hard, which is why we're going medium today. So it'll take about forty minutes or so. So here we're going to go. We'll get started in a few in just a second. I'll count you down. Okay. As soon as I select the uh, the, the music here, we get the we get the start for the the timer. So st timer starting in three. Two, one, go. Here we go. We're off with Finland. It's our first race. Mainly gentle slopes, rocks lying at the edges of the road. Would you like to explain what the rocks are like? That? Oh dear, why have we got a problem yep. here? Yep, I had this problem the last time. Have you, uh, have you... No, my controls were fine, or well, they were, unless I've changed them again. Yep, it was manual gears again. Right, okay. Let's just keep going. Right. Because I'd already set it by muscle memory, I'm always uh, changing it. Uh, what? This game just misbehaves for me at marathons. It really does. Right. Come on. Did, did you, um... Yeah, we'll restart. If you can, you can you reset the yeah. timer, please, Viper. Sorry, mate. I'll just wait till we get yeah. that sorted. Um, yeah, just apologies for that. Good to go. Yeah, perfect. I'll count <laughs> you down again. Right, here Thank we you. go. Let's get it right this time. Here you go. Right, we've got three, two, one. Go. Finally. So it works this time. Right, so before we messed it up, would you like to explain what the the rocks are? Yes. Or explain the obstacles in general, please, Duck? Yeah, so uh, the gen obviously you, you know how a, a standard track works. You you have a circuit, it, you, you do a certain number of laps. Um, but on the tracks in this game, you will often have things in the middle of the road. So here we've got some rocks, sometimes you have signs, sometimes you have oil patches and water and various other obstacles that, that just make your life generally harder. 
Okay. Obviously, you crash into any of them, you slow down, so don't crash into them. Yeah, uh, as demonstrated. Uh, the major difficulty in this game, in my opinion, comes with the two, two factors. One is learning the tracks, and as Doc said earlier, there's like 32 tracks in the game total, so there's quite a lot to learn. It's quite a big game, especially for when it came out. It's a 30-year-old game now, and it's uh, quite impressive in terms of its amount of content. And then the other major factor is the uh, the AI car movement. Uh, I always describe it as RNG, but not RNG, because technically it isn't RNG, but it might as well be. Would you like to elaborate on that a bit, Doc? Yeah. Yeah, they're um, so the, the way the cars move is that they they are simply moving left to right across the road, um, but they're they're not all in sync. They're all different different spots in the cycle wherever you go, and because you know the tiniest change in your movement will affect where the, the cars positions are. You you can't predict them in advance. You have to you always have to react to where they, where you see them, and it's not always easy to predict. Yeah, it can be particularly challenging the other major thing and you will see it happen a lot during this run is the way the physics of this game work which uh, as i said far from realistic are the fact that if i am going fast and i hit something i basically come to an almost dead stop but the major issue with that it's better for me to hit a car for example than it is to hit like a sign of a tree or something but the major problem will come on hills would you like to say more on yeah, that, Doc? Yeah, you say it's not very realistic. It's actually fairly realistic, especially for a game of this age. Um, you, you, it's much, much more difficult to accelerate going uphill than it is going downhill. Um, if you are going slowly uphill, you will find it very difficult to, to gain any speed. And you'll basically have to wait till you get to the top of the hill before you can go fast. Yeah, so you that... Need, you need to... You need to try and preserve your speed as much as possible. Exactly. The the major th critical thing is basically trying not to crash at the bottom of a hill. Uh, hitting, hitting a car or crashing into a barrier at the bottom of a hill is absolutely terminal uh, for your speed. And it really does cause a few problems. Right, that's the first race done, which was Finland. Uh, the second race is Thailand. Each race has its own sort of uh, geographical location. And it has its own track layout. It also has uh, the, the sort of, as I say, its own sort of unique, oh dear, that was bad, uh, take on things. So, for example, the first track there was what I would call an obstacle track. It had the rocks in the road and it, was, it wasn't a difficult track, but it, you had to memorise where the rocks were, basically. Now, this track here is an example of what I call a twisty track. There's actually no obstacles. There's no physical obstacles in the road here. However... You do have these enemy cars, as you can see, and some fairly tight turns. And you've got to be very careful not to uh, screw those up. Now, the other thing I think occurs in this one, which is rather bad there, is fuel. I don't know if you'd like to talk about fuel, Doc? Yeah, so one of the uh, one of the key, key parts of this game is that there is a limited fuel. And as you drive, obviously you use fuel. Uh, most races you can't get from start to end without with your starting amount of fuel. So you will need to stop uh, in in the pit lane and refuel for a short period to so carry on. If you run out of fuel in the race, that is it. Your race is over. Your your entire game is over. Yeah, that's a big difficulty when running this this game. Because remember, this game came out, as I say, 30 years ago, over 30 years ago now. And, uh, well, it's very much a case of difficulty of the times. Oh, that was terrible. I got sandwiched into the sign there. Uh, difficulty of the times. And it's very punishing. And remember that, as I said, it's a case of learning these tracks. I played this game as a kid and I still struggle to beat the hard difficulty. I mean, I can beat it. But it's tough. You've got to not only know the tracks very, very well, you've got to execute correctly as well. And execution, as we talked about earlier with the car movement, is very much reactions. It isn't the case of every run of this game will be different. Every run of this game during practice was, was different. Because sometimes you get a good race, sometimes you get a bad race. 
and yeah it it, it has what's the word tension perhaps uh to the to speed ones of this game because one mistake and you you can screw it up and, and that's it basically yeah and it's easy to, to mess up as well you can just just one corner can cost you like basically the whole race right okay so there we go. stop there then so what i have to do is pull over to the side slow right down and then it will fill up would you like to explain what that sort of second car is on the screen there, Duck, that's sitting there not doing yes. anything? I am. Um, so the this is actually a, a two-player game. And as it's generally built around the split-screen uh, multiplayer gameplay. But obviously, when only one, one person's playing, they have to do something with the second screen. So you're seeing a, a Lotus Esprit being worked on by two. Nice. Yep. Alright, okay, I'll try and get this this time. No, failed it. Right, okay, so that's the second race down. Uh being honest with you, that's not been the best the best two, first two races. Uh Greenland race out of ten. And this is where it's things start to get a bit more difficult. The, the first two are relatively easy, I think. This is a, a more difficult one. I'm gonna concentrate on the first part of this. If you'd like to explain the major feature of this particular race, please look. Um, is the big bend? The oil? The, the, the oil, yeah. So there's there's uh, lots of oil on this track. And if you if you drive on it and you turn, you can... you Essentially, you lose all of your handling. You lose all control. You, you find it very difficult to actually get around the corner. I think it slows you down a bit as well. So it's not, it's not just handling. It also affects your speed. Yeah. Um, and, and then we've, we've also got some roadworks coming in as well. Yeah. to uh, guide you around it. Yeah, the, the, that is the, the, the thing. It's interesting because most courses have a sort of mixture of things. And this one is particularly interesting because the major feature is that big bend. Uh, there's a bend with the oil on it. And you've got to be very, very careful how you handle it. So if you go into it too quickly, and it can be a real pain. Now, this is going to be a pain because I'm coming right up on it and I've got traffic. And yeah, that, that's what happens. It's so easy, so easy to slide off the road there into the barriers. But I have to say that isn't too bad. That isn't too bad. Notice how long it takes me to get back up the speed as well after I crash into something. So when I screw it up, you get penalized quite badly because you end up getting uh, crashed into something and your speed, as I said, it can lose you races if that happens at the bottom of a hill. There's a race coming up at the end of this difficulty, the second last race, that the start finish straight is literally at the bottom of a hill. So at the beginning of the race, if you bump into something, you end up like last easily. And it's it's quite unpleasant. Okay. So, is there any other mechanic? Oh, would you like to talk about the the lap mechanic, please, Duck? Top left there. Ah, oh, yeah. So, you can see in the in the top left we have a a, uh, a progress marker essentially. So you each the entire race is split up into into laps. The laps are marked with the black lines, and the red line is telling you exactly how far you've gone. So, what this is telling us now is that we're at the end of the fourth lap, start of the fifth lap, and there's six laps in total. Yeah. So it, it's and you, you, you need to, to uh, keep an eye on it if you're trying to gauge your fuel. Because you, it's, it's always important to know when you need to stop for fuel as well. Yeah. And how much fuel to put in. Yeah. Fuel, fuel is one of the, it's probably the most critical mechanic, really. Because without fuel, you, you, you lose, basically. And it's judging it can be, it can be variable. Most of the time, it's easy enough to judge. So, for example, that's my beeping there telling me my fuel is uh, running out. So I've just got to make sure. I normally go to just after the L and that's me ready to go. That'll be enough for one lap. Now, there are a couple of tracks later on that you will not be able to get away with just the one lap at the end. You actually have to stop earlier. In fact, I think the last race, you've got to stop after four laps. There's seven laps. You've got to stop after four of them uh, for the fuel because that's a big, long track. So you will probably see that later on. So the interesting thing I like about this game then, from a speedrunning perspective, is you might think, oh, this is, this is just driving. Well, yes, it is. 
but there is a lot of skill involved here. Uh, not to blow my own trumpet, but this is a very tricky game to, to sort of get right and to get fast. Now, would you like to explain what I did there, please, Doctor? Yes, so uh, it's, it's a uh, one of the weirdest um, speed tech in this game is what happens after you cross the finish line. So the game, the game will take your car and it will it will try to slow it down to zero before it actually moves on to the next to the next stage. Uh, so the slower you the slower you're going, the the faster that will happen. And the, the fastest way to make that happen is to, to crash into the finish line, which will cut your speed very very quickly and then make it move on to the next stage very quickly. Now this is a particular this is Uruguay. This is a particularly tricky track because this hill here is a pain. Because as I talked about earlier, hills are not fun when you, you crash on them. So and then this bit's really nasty because you've got to go middle, left, right, left, middle for the rocks. And again, you have to memorize that pattern. The tracks are always the same. So playing this game frequently means you will learn the tracks, but some of them are just absolute monsters in terms of where the barriers and where the, the obstacles are placed. Uh, right. Ooh. Oh dear, see that was really bad because I had to slow right down there to avoid crashing and now I'm at the bottom of the hill and this is going to hurt. I'm going to lose places here probably. You'll see them coming past me. Oh, it wasn't too bad actually. It would have been worse if I crashed. So, and then you've got this section here. This is the sort of slalom section with the rocks, which is trickier than it looks. There we go. And again, you can see the car moving back and forth there in front of me. That's what Doc was saying earlier on regarding the car movement. But like I said, this this game, this race is is this game is really fun. I mean, this was a game I played when I was a kid, and it's it's just a fun game. For me, a game should be fun first and foremost and this is just such a fun game and speedrunning as i say is not trivial <laughs> uh it's not something you think is you would think is oh it's easy i just sit and play no it's 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 taken me a long time to, to be able to play as i say i can't even pass this well i can but i struggle to beat this game on hard uh it is still a very very tough game uh Yeah, there's there are some some levels on uh, on hard that they seem like they're impossible. It seems like it's it's actually not possible to to get first because there, there's some very short tracks, and it might sound like the short ones aren't as bad, but of course that also means you've got less time to to fight your way into first or even into tenth. You've just got less less chances, fewer chances, which means you've got less chance of actually winning. We haven't actually talked about that yet, Duck, about the qualifying and the positions. Could you maybe go over that quickly while we're starting the next race? Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's fairly simple. You, uh, the, the positions, when, when you finish a race, all those positions are reversed for the start of the next race. So if you finish, finish in first, you start the next race in 20th. If you finish in second, you start the next race in 19th and so on. Uh, if you don't, if you fail to finish in the top ten, you lose. You just straight out lose. You can't move on to the next race. Your game is uh, game is over. Yeah, which is not the pleasant. dreaded fear of being knocked out before yeah. the race is over, basically. Yeah. Yeah. The worst, the worst part about that is that the other, the other cars don't seem to have that problem. <laughs> Cheaters. Speaking of not having a problem, maybe this will give you a boost of confidence, Tim. We've had a $5 donation from Dave from Newcastle saying, Best of luck, Tiny Tim, you've got this. Oh, thank you so much, Dave. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much for your generosity. I really, really do appreciate it. Uh, as I said earlier, I'm doing this. I love doing this, right? I love playing games. I love going fast. For me, it's all about having fun and enjoying yourself. And yes, it's it's serious business going fast here. It's serious business driving fast. But you've got to have fun at the same time. And also, we're raising money for a fantastic cause for Mind. So yeah, please, if you get those donations in, that would be really appreciated. And uh, I hope you're enjoying what you're what you're seeing now. I'm going to go off script slightly here and ask you, Viper, what's your opinion of this game, my friend? Because I know you've played this. 
don't know if he's still there. Yeah, I was just checking something. Um, opinion of this game? From what I played, um, quite enjoyed it to be honest. It was a bit tricky to get used to, and I'll admit, for an old game, I mean, like, for me it's obviously been, I've, I've been more used to PlayStation and onwards, really. So I've not really been a, a player of the older games, but I think if I got used to this more and more, I think I would have get, I would get better at it. Obviously that comes out saying it's just, you know, practice makes perfect, but as an overall game, um, yeah, very basic in structure, but very enjoyable and very challenging, as you said, <laughs> very challenging. Yeah, no, this is this is a this is a tricky game. Right, we've got one more, well, two more laps left now. So I am going to concentrate here because this is where it gets fun because I've now got to make sure that I get to first. If I want to win this race, and winning isn't required, would you like to explain the sort of requirements for the run, please, Doc? Yeah, so we we have our standard uh, score with by position. So you you come in first, you score. I think it's twenty points. Yeah. And then you get less points as you get further down the field. Uh, so you, uh, at the end of the ten races, you obviously we need to be first overall to just, well to, to pass the yeah. the category basically um, to to win. And that doesn't that means we don't have to win every race, but we do need to win most of them. We do need to to, to do well in general. Yeah, you, you need it's, to win the majority. It's not just a case of scraping through on, on qualifying every time. Okay, that was very successful. And that was a beautiful uh, dunt at the end there. I've yes. just written off uh, several thousand, hundred thousand pounds worth of Lotus. <laughs> okay, Germany. This is an interesting race. This is, when I played this game when I was little, one of my least favourite races. Because there, as you can see, is a lot going on here. You've got water, you've got barriers, you've got roadworks, you've got everything in this in this race. And until you learn the track, it is particularly difficult. Now, of course, I've just gone and done a fairly good first lap there so far. Well, there we go, losing it a bit there. But this is quite a long course, and it's got all sorts of nasty little tricks on it. And like I said, my problem with this one is that I couldn't, I didn't learn it. And when you don't learn it, it's it bites you a little bit, like that. Yeah, this this this, this is where they start to actually throw everything at you. Like they've they've taken you through the f the first few races. They're like saying, okay, we've got this mechanic and we've got this this feature, and this this is the part where they start saying, okay, can you deal with them all? Yeah, yep, yep, yep. And it's interesting what Duck was saying you know, about earlier about the difficulty levels. I mean, this is the medium difficulty, but I would say that there are there's at least one track on hard that's uh, on hard, sorry, on easy that is probably harder than most of the tracks on medium, and there are two or three tracks on medium that are harder than the majority of the tracks in hard. So it's it's got an interesting sort of difficulty curve. Uh, having yeah, said that, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 I was going to say there's a lot of overlap. They are they are. Um... They're, they're a subset of the easiest tracks, but not all of the easiest tracks, if that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, the last two tracks in this difficulty are two of probably the five most difficult tracks in the whole game, in my opinion. Uh, the last two tracks here, USA and China, uh, not China, USA and Japan, are unpleasant, <laughs> to be honest. They're, they're not fun to drive because they are... They, they 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 rely very much on being able to stay away from the enemy cars. So yes, a lot of that is reaction. But as we said earlier, the way I like to think about the sort of AI for the cars is it's effectively RNG. So you are relying on them staying out of your way, basically. If you get unlucky, it can cause you significant problems. I mean, I can go from one attempt winning the, both of those races to the next attempt failing to qualify for one of them. So it's it's not they're all down to RNG, obviously. Skill and, and sort of playing the game does have a big part of it. But it's part of the challenge of this game is is being able to uh, to sort of overcome those difficulties. But we'll we'll see how it how it behaves today. It'll be quite interesting to see how it, how we do. We're not doing too badly so far. What have we won every race up to this point, I think, so Yeah, they you 
had a close one for, with the last race, but you, I think you, you took took the car at the last corner. Yeah. So. But, the only two well, that I'm really concerned about are the last two. The rest, yeah. the rest are. I, I should should win all the rest. I might not win all the rest. There's a couple that I might not win, but again, as long as I'm getting second or third on on those races, then it's not a problem. The two where I may struggle to qualify are the last two. And that will only generally happen if I make a mistake or several mistakes, because you do have a little bit of leeway. And also RNG. I mean, it, it can just be not not your day, unfortunately. Uh, but we, we will see. We will see. I'm quietly confident. One of the other things that I'm not a big fan of in this game, but I understand it, and actually I think it really adds to the sort of racing realism of it, is the back marker mechanic. Would you like to mention those, Duck? Yeah, so um, if you if you go fast enough, which you should be doing if you're speedrunning, uh, you'll, you'll lap cars. You'll have cars that are on a previous lap that you'll have to overtake, and they just, they just add to your, the obstacles you have to dodge, essentially. Uh, it can be really annoying to deal with because they're all slow. <laughs> yeah. Now this this track this is Ecuador. Uh, this is track six, I think, and it is a fast track. It's also a twisty track, so there's no actual obstacles here. But what you've got to be aware of is if I hit something, it's going to slow me down quite significantly. And because the other cars are travelling at quite speed, they will go flying past me. Look, there we go. Look. That was a, a mistake there. Now, it's interesting because on some courses, the, the, the speed of the cars isn't, isn't constant. So on some courses, they do go faster than on others. And it's quite obvious uh, when that's the case. The good news is that mostly on the obstacle courses, they tend to go slower. Not always, but mostly. For example, Germany is a good example of that. They go an awful lot slower on Germany than they do on this one. But the thing with it is that one little dunt, one little nip like that, does slow you down. Uh, and in order to get the fastest speed run time, you'd have to drive this game perfectly. And nobody would be able to do that. Well, maybe a computer or a robot, but I'm neither. <laughs> And then, of course, the other major factor is, is factored in is the fuel. So you just need to make sure... Oh, dear, now I, I knew as I started swinging towards that. Now, I want to talk about power sliding a little bit. In this game, you do have a kind of power sliding mechanic. Uh, normally, what I'm doing is I have my hand down on the acceleration button and I've got it down pretty much 99% of the time. However, what I can do is I can lift off on the acceleration and turn into a corner. And obviously, I'm not braking... But because I'm not actually accelerating, I am sort of slowing down a little bit. And I can use that to basically drift around the corners. I don't do it particularly often. I try not to, but I can use it to get past cars, basically. Uh, that's something that I tend to do. Uh, you will see if I use the brakes because the brake lights will come on. But most of the time I try not to because braking is slow. So, and we want to go fast. Of course, there's natural brakes like crashing into other cars. Yeah, and that, of course they're the best brakes because they're they're much more effective. They're very effective, yes. Too effective sometimes. Right. Okay. Now then, I've left this one a bit tight on fuel, but I should be okay because I could have come in there. But to be perfectly honest, I always prefer to leave fuel as late as I possibly can most of the time. Uh, what tends to happen is you can get out in front, and obviously I'm in back markers now. But I'd rather be doing that than coming in for fuel early. Now, I should be okay here for fuel. I really hope I am. i would be very, very miffed if I run out of fuel. No, I'm okay, right. So, what I've got to do, there's the brake lights straight in there, and I'm only gonna get just as much as I need to get me round. I may lose a position or two here. Unlikely, but it's possible. Because it takes you a while, obviously, to get back up to speed. Once I'm back up to speed, then I'll be, uh, I'll be good to go. Right, okay. That isn't too bad. 
And you may think looking at these, all these courses look the same. They're not, believe me. When you're actually playing them, they are very, very distinctive. They've obviously got a very distinctive color palette. They've got a distinctive, which is pretty by the way, for, I mean, it's a 40, it's a, a 30 year old game and look how, look how good it looks. Uh, I mean, it, okay, it's frame rate isn't any great shakes, but the actual visuals of the game are, in my opinion, quite impressive. Oh, hey, Ickle Cat! <laughs> right. Okay, so, this race. Uh, would you like to explain about this race, Duck? Well, I do it, because it's a tough one. Well, I mean, we, we could just watch and see what happens. But... <laughs> okay, okay. Keep an eye out on this race. Well, uh, This is a, a test for everybody. I'd like everybody to keep an eye on this race and see if you can look out for something a bit weird on, on this race. Okay, because this race was one of my real problems when I first started getting this category sort of mastered. Uh, this race is Argentina, and it is probably one of the fastest races in the whole game. There's only really one in in uh, hard, which is Brazil, I think, which is faster than this. And I'm doing a poor job of this at the moment. Right. Anyway. Yeah. So the uh, the issue of this track is that every every turn is a left turn, but you wouldn't necessarily know that from the signs on the side of the road because one of those one of them actually tells you there's a right turn coming up. And it's not a right turn, it's a left turn. Yes, they're lying to you. And it's particularly nasty because... Oh dear, that was bad, that was bad, come on. As you can see, this track is so fast. Look, three laps in and I'm only in eighth position here, look. Oh dear, that was bad, that was bad. Right, okay. Foot down, foot down. Let's let's crack on. Now, this, this race is one of the ones... Uh, it's not one of the ones I'm worried about failing, but you don't get a lot of latitude here. So you've got to make sure that you're not falling for that blinking bend. There it is, look. I always used to fall for that because you, you sort of do it on muscle memory and you sort of see it and you think, oh, right, got a turn. And of course, you go flying off into the into the uh, the wilderness. And that's bad. Come on. Hitting something on this track. Sorry, Duck. Go ahead. I was going to say, again it's, it's, again, it's a case of actually learning the track. You, you, you have to memorise the corners. Okay, this one's going to be tighter than I would have hoped, but we will see. If I can get past these guys cleanly now. Nope, that's not going to happen. Yeah, I'm going to be struggling to win this now. Because, unfortunately, the traffic has been a little difficult. And now I've got to go for fuel. If I was to press on here, I would miss the fuel. So I, I'm not going to win this now. I'm going to try, but as long as I finish 10th, I'm okay. Obviously, I want to finish higher than that, but I think this is the first race I'm going to lose. But again, remember that that doesn't really matter. Obviously, it's a pain because it's it does it has been a little bit of loss of spit, loss of time, but. Yeah, I'm only going to be fifth, am I? I'm going to be sixth. Yeah. Okay, so that's not the end of the world. And I've only got two races left anyway. So here we go. This is USA. I hate this course. I don't know if you'd like to say anything about this course, Doc, but. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm uh, it, the, the main issue with it is that it's, it's a twisty course. But it's also got obstacles on it, and uh, that's that's a horrible combination. And there's the hill. This was the course I referred to earlier at the beginning of the run, when I said there was a, a course with a hill at the beginning. This is it. And if you bump at the beginning, you lose a lot of time on the hill. A lot of time. Now the second part of the course isn't as bad, but bumping on that hill or bumping going over the start finish straight is really, 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 really painful. And this course is one of the two that could cause me problems. Now, hopefully, if all goes according to plan, it won't. But I cannot guarantee it won't. So I do have a little uh, safety feature in mind if I need it. But hopefully I won't need it. Don't do that to me. Yeah, look at that. Look, see. Yeah. 
Oh dear. And you can tell straight away at the beginning if you're going to have an okay race or if you're going to have difficulty. Now, the, it's still possible to bring this back, but it's going to be challenging. I'm just of course, the issue is that you still need to stop for fuel somewhere. Yeah. So it's not even just a case of getting into tenth and staying there. You have to get quite far up and pit. Yeah. The major thing that I'm I'm concerned about now is if I really screw this one up, which I hope I don't, but if I really screw this one up and Japan, will I have enough points to win the championship? I should. Because I've won all the races apart from Argentina. So it would be tight though, I think. Come on. There we go. This is where the game really, really pulls out the stops. I mean, this is, as I said earlier, this is a medium difficulty track, but it's one of the harder tracks in the whole game, uh, I would say. Oh. And there's the hill effect in full uh, demonstration. And they'll be roaring up on, on me from behind because they don't slow down on hills. <laughs> well, they didn't crash. <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. <laughs> right, what's my fuel like? I'm okay. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go. I can get away with another lap, can't I? Yeah. Let's go away with one more lap. Okay, so that's actually nay bad. That's nay bad at all. Let's just let's just see if I can get up this hill in one piece. That will be very very handy. Right. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Now avoid that rock. There's a really nasty rock there. I actually hit the wrong rock. I hit the one on the outside rather than the one on the inside that I usually hit. Right. Okay. There's my fuel. That's okay. This is going all right. Let's just get out of these rocks. There's a combination of rocks and water here, and normally water doesn't bother me too much, but on this particular track it really does, because water slows you down. And water on a hill really slows you down. And this is the problem, because you've stopped for fuel, right? But now you've got a great big huge hill to climb, with water on it. And, as we talked about earlier, that's the major, major issue here. I am going to lose places. I would be surprised if I don't. Oh, oh, looks like I'm... It's called me a liar there, never mind. <laughs> there we go. I'll, I'll take that. I'd rather be a liar than uh, overtaken. Right. Okay. Well, that was a turn up. There we go. Look at that. Second. I'll take that. Right. We are coming up on the final race. We are there. We are at Japan. This race is an absolute pain. I'm going to be quiet here and let you talk a little bit, Duck. Yeah, I mean, there, like, there, there isn't much to say about this race that we uh, we haven't seen in anything else. It's just it's just a lot harder than the the, the previous races we've seen. Um, one thing I did want to say is that this game does have a spiritual successor yes uh, in the in the form of horizon chase turbo so uh horizon chase turbo heavily inspired by this game uh it has the same uh music same composer same composer um and a lot of a lot of the mechanics lifted directly from this yeah horizon chase turbo is an amazing amazing game I believe you've run that Viper, and it's a it's a fantastic game. I, uh, I I really like it myself. It's a really really good, and of course, it is very strongly influenced, as Duck says, by this game. It's funny as you mentioned um, Horizon Chase Turbo. I've got one of it next Saturday. Excellent. So I've got that one. I think it's mid spring speed fling or something. Nice. So yeah, it gets you off. I think it's rookie series as well. So that'll be fun. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a fun game. It's a very, very fun game. And like I say, I was immediately taken with it because it's the same composer as this game. And the music, we haven't really commented on it, but the music in this game is superb. 
I gotta say, this might shock you as well, you probably don't even know this yet, but I did submit Horizon Chase Turbo as a race to GDQ and I put it against you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. It's the, it's, it's the rookie series anyway, um, and I put an estimate about 50 minutes, but it's... Uh, I don't know whether it'll get in or not, but if it does, then surprise! If it does, get a race in GDQ, yeah, great! Yeah. <laughs> I did not know about that, GDQ but that's a pleasant surprise. Long. As you can see, this track is, is particularly nasty because it's a, it's a bendy track, and as Duck said, it's got oil and it's also very, very fast. I mean, there we go, look, that was me. One mistake and I've lost like three places there. So what I've got to try and do is keep my concentration here and I've got to try and get these places back. They'll be important because what I want to try and do is get through this bit here. Come on. Oh, that's nice. Come on, stay out of my way. That's nice. Okay, now then. This is where it gets interesting because, believe it or not, I'm about to go for fuel. I am about to go for fuel here. So, there we go. Fuel. And I actually got a little bit of a time save there by crashing into the barrier. Right, there we go. That should now be enough. Now notice I'm now in 11th, so I'm not qualifying at the moment. So what I've got to do now is run pretty much a perfect race from here to the end to ensure that I can qualify. Because I've taken my fuel, so this is my, my sort of net position, if you like. So I need to make sure that I really sort it out. Remember, the other cars don't take pit stops, so I will not be overtaking any other cars from pit stops, unfortunately. Uh, it doesn't work like that in this game. Yeah. As we've established, they're, they're cheaters. Yeah. They, they, don't, they don't need to qualify. They don't They don't take pit stops. Right. However, if I can hang on... Oh, that's a pain. ...to at least 10th place, which at the moment I'm not doing a great job of, then I'll be all right. Yeah, I don't think there's any danger of you not winning the uh, the championship. No, I don't think there is. I think I'll be all right on that. As long as you qualify. Yeah, I came second on in USA, so that was my worry was was finishing like ninth or tenth in USA and then ninth or tenth on this. That was my concern, but uh, I don't think that's going to be a problem. Oh, that was lovely. I do say so myself. That was good. Okay, well I hope everybody's enjoyed the run. We're coming up to the final lap here, so time will be coming up right at the very end as soon as I cross the finish line here. So I hope everybody has enjoyed the run. Uh, my name is TinyTim78. Please feel free to follow if you like uh, like what you've seen. I do a lot of 8-bit and 16-bit stuff, mainly platformers, but I do do the odd bit of racing as we, as we can see. So I hope everybody has enjoyed. Uh, and a big thank you to Duck as well for the commentary. Right, no I'm not going to win the race. But that's not a problem. I'm still going to win the championship. So there we go. And time. There we go. That is within a few seconds of my PB. That is definitely within a few seconds of my PB. Would you uh, like to know your official time? I wouldn't mind, yes. 38.36. Yep, I'm just going to check that. I'm pretty certain that it's within within 10 seconds of the PB there. I think very nice. That was a particularly good run. Very, very happy with that indeed. Let's have a quick look. Just... PB is thirty-eight twelve. So yeah, but that's still very, very good. I was going to say just to finish off a good run, uh, we've got a five-dollar donation which comes from Tiny Tim seventy-eight fan with the comment <laughs> of "God bless." Ah. <laughs> thank you so much indeed, my biggest fan. Thank you, Amiso. Thank you, everybody, for the GGs and the thank yous in chat. I hope everybody enjoyed the run, as I say. Please feel free to give me a follow if you're at all interested. I do all sorts of stuff. I do a little bit of Let's Playing. I do retro stuff. I do 16-bit stuff, 8-bit spectrum stuff. So please, please feel free to, to come along and say hi. I'm a very, uh, very laid-back and, and fun stream. So thank you, first of all, for McCrayathon, for Viper, for letting me come on. I really appreciate it. It's been an absolute honour. Really, really enjoyed it. Again, thank you to Duck for the commentary. And yeah, I yep. think that's I think that's me. No problem. Thank you very much. And on that note as well, whilst we're on the topic of switching over and things like that and saying our goodbyes, uh, we're going to have a quick intermission break. It might be a bit longer than usual, but when we come back, we're going to have Dirt 2 X Games Europe by Leviathan. 
Um, and also, Tiny Tim himself is going to be on hosting duties for the next couple of rounds, so you get to enjoy more of his lovely voice as the rounds go on. Or not! <laughs> um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's been all from my side on hosting. I'll hand it back over to Tim uh, for that side of things, and, yeah, we'll go to a quick intermission. I'll be right back. <laughs> 